Hi, how are you doing? This is the Gamertron. Welcome back to the Gamertron Show. And welcome to a video about the most original topic on YouTube, Call of Duty. Oh, did I say original? <laughs> oh dear, my apologies. I meant to say the most milked, beaten, abused, and battered topic on the internet, Call of Duty. Now, I have a variety of opinions surrounding the games themselves, the communities around them, and the publishers and developers behind them. And my opinion surrounding all these subtopics over the broad topic that is the video game series Call of Duty range from positive to negative and somewhere in between. And I'm sure a great deal of you are just tired of hearing about Call of Duty, which is why I do my best to make videos not covering those games. On top of that, really, there's not much else to talk about when it comes to Call of Duty, because everything, every facet, every angle, every pixel of each individual game in the Call of Duty series has been talked about and picked apart, whether it be it's single player, co-op, or multiplayer. And yet, and yet, the Call of Duty bandwagon still lives on, on both sides of the spectrum, fans of the series and haters of the series, which is whom this video is dedicated to. Call of Duty and the game's publisher Activision are in their point of power in the games industry because of the people, because of the gaming community. And the gaming community really needs to knock it off with the Call of Duty hypocrisy. The hypocrisy surrounding this video game series is astronomically nonsensical. First, let's engage the hypocrisy from the Call of Duty haters. And this is not strictly related to the kind of Call of Duty haters who hate on the internet, on Twitter, on social media, in comment sections. On forums and whatnot, this also extends to Call of Duty critics, as they were. YouTubers that dedicate their YouTube channels to talking about the negatives and the downfalls of Call of Duty on many different levels. Now, the gaming community has an absolute right to be critical of Call of Duty. The game's publisher, Activision, has been lately running the series into the ground, refusing to fix problems that have been present in the Call of Duty games for years, refusing to lower the prices of their games. Black Ops 2 came out in 2012. It is still over $60 on Steam. Call of Duty Ghosts came out in 2013. It is still over $60 on Steam. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare came out in 2014. It is still over $60 on Steam. Meanwhile, other video games like Wolfenstein The New Order, which was released in 2014, has dropped in price to over $25 on Steam, as well as games Games like Battlefield 4, which was released in 2013, has dropped in price on Origin to just $20. So as you can see, Activision are some mighty greedy bastards. You still have to pay full price for Call of Duty games that are years old. But besides the price point, another consistent nagging issue with the Call of Duty series, and anyone who plays the multiplayer and has done some investigation into the online of Call of Duty knows that there is built-in lag. There is built-in lag and latency implemented into the very code of the game. So instead of actually balancing out the multiplayer and letting individual player skill determine who's going to win the game, that is instead determined by your internet connection and how good or bad it is. Because that's such an ideal and player-friendly method to online play. Oh wait, no it's not, it's incredibly stupid, lazy, and a tad bit shady. Now I could keep going on and on and on. There are a number of objective, objective flaws and faults with the Call of Duty video games. They've been talked about, they've been done to death, and I'm sorry for repeating them for the past couple minutes. Because again, sorry to repeat myself, while everyone has the right to be extremely critical of Call of Duty and Activision, the criticism loses its luster when every day you go back to play Call of Duty and talk about Call of Duty online. And specifically for YouTubers, just keep making videos on Call of Duty over and over again using Call of Duty gameplay footage that you recorded. So you're playing Call of Duty, leaving comments on Call of Duty, talking about Call of Duty, making videos on Call of Duty, while all at the same time supporting Call of Duty. I don't know if you realize this, but the more you talk about Call of Duty, the more you play Call of Duty, the more you show off Call of Duty. It doesn't matter whether you're being critical or negative. Just showing off, just talking about, just acknowledging Call of Duty in any way, shape, or form 
is a form of promotion. You're promoting it, you're keeping it in people's minds, you're making people aware of it. Even with this video, which is technically being critical of Call of Duty, I'm still technically promoting it because I'm talking about it. I may not be showing gameplay footage in order to make a point, but this is still inadvertently supporting Call of Duty. And that's what the Call of Duty haters, the Call of Duty critics, the Call of Duty, or the at least the anti-Call of Duty YouTubers need to understand. Your point is not getting across, you are not even making a point. Your point is lost to the wind when you're supporting Call of Duty so consistently. Playing Call of Duty is supporting the game. Showing off gameplay footage is supporting the game. Talking about the game is supporting the game. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, all publicity is good publicity. Doesn't matter if it's negative or not. And it's very hypocritical, especially of the Call of Duty YouTubers who hate Call of Duty and rally against Call of Duty so much. But every other video is talking about Call of Duty and showing off gameplay from Call of Duty. But don't get me wrong, the people who leave comments right on forums, on, right on social media in general, they're just as much at fault. If you hate Call of Duty so much, why do you keep writing about it? Why do you dedicate hours of your life writing paragraph after paragraph about how much you hate this video game series? Dedicating so much time and effort into something you claim to hate isn't really hatred, that's passion. That means you actually genuinely care about the thing. Which I can kind of understand for Call of Duty veterans, people who've been playing Call of Duty for years and really enjoyed the older titles only to see them go the direction that Activision is taking the series now. I get that, I understand that. But because of the direction that Activision has been taking Call of Duty, it's the reason I haven't been given Activision my money for the last few years. Yes, I've bought and played their games, but I haven't bought them at full price, and I haven't bought them from, like, Steam or anything like that. I usually get them off second-hand, third-party websites, gone an extremely cheap code or copy offline, so Activision doesn't get my money, but I still get to try out the games. But that's besides the point. I've made my statements, I've made my opinion on Call of Duty well known. I've made my point. I've enforced my point as forcefully as I can, but now I've moved on and done the appropriate thing. I've taken the appropriate measures. I'm talking about and playing playing and supporting and promoting other video games. Yes, I know, that's a real shocker, right? All your hatred towards Call of Duty is pointless if you don't provide a more optimistic example. Okay, you hate Call of Duty, then what video games do you like? Your message comes off stronger when you don't dedicate every hour of every day of every month to the subject of your message. Once you say, this is bad, I don't like it, this is the reason I don't like it, you've said it and you can only say it so many ways. But then you have to add on to that, you have to talk about what you do like, what you think is a good example, a good counter to what you think is bad. Something you believe to be good, something that you like that counters the thing you dislike and you think is bad. Okay, for instance, you think the Call of Duty video games have bad single-player components, that their single-player campaigns aren't that good. Then talk about, show off, and promote single-player games or first-person shooters with single-player campaigns that you like, that you think are pretty good. Like, say, the previously mentioned Wolfenstein The New Order, or the new Doom that came out this year. Do you think Call of Duty is a bad multiplayer game? Well, give an example of a good multiplayer that does multiplayer right, like the recently released Overwatch. Or perhaps Rainbow Six Siege. Showing your hatred or disdain for something is meaningless if you don't show what you care about and what you love. If it's just, I hate Call of Duty, I hate Call of Duty, I hate Call of Duty, but then you turn around and go play Call of Duty, and just keep talking about Call of Duty, then you don't really hate Call of Duty? It's just another form of, well, love. The following is a video clip from YouTuber B. Dobbins for the win. Definitely check out his YouTube channel, recommended, very good commentator. But in one of his videos, he asked this question at the end of the video about Call of Duty. We have to change the rotted Call of Duty culture and convince gamers everywhere that there is more to this hobby than the slot machine that is Call of Duty. The For the Win query of the day is, how the fuck do you think we do that? While I appreciate the question, the answer should be obvious. 
don't buy the game every year, and play, support, and talk about other video games. Like I said earlier, your negative criticism is invalidated if you don't offer a positive counter. For instance, I don't like the RNG microtransactions in Overwatch. I would prefer to buy some sort of currency to buy what I want when I want it. A game that provides this is Rainbow Six Siege. I spend money, I earned in-game currency, and I can just buy what I want. There we go! I dislike the recent Call of Duties. I don't like the direction of their single-player, multiplayer, or co-op game modes. A game I do like that does better than Call of Duty for me, Doom, has single-player, multiplayer, and co-op elements that I prefer and find more enjoyable. There we go! So for the Call of Duty haters, to sum this all up, if you hate Call of Duty and if you disagree with the direction the series is going, by all means make your voices heard. But you would send a much more powerful message if you talked about, played, and promoted the games you also love and enjoy. Alrighty, that was a long portion of the video dedicated to the hypocrisy of the Call of Duty haters. Now the hypocrisy of the Call of Duty fans. Listen, it's alright to love the game. If you guys enjoy Call of Duty, by all means keep enjoying the series. But don't just go around calling people haters and idiots when they point out and critique some of the glaring issues that these games have. That the Call of Duty games haven't gone to price drop that they have built-in lag in the multiplayer, that the games haven't upgraded to a new graphics engine and are still using the over a decade old Quake engine, the fact that the most recent Call of Duty games, instead of evolving the series from what the game was grounded and built off of, the games instead blatantly, and I hate to use this word, rip off from other games. Look. I enjoy the Call of Duty video games as well. They're by no means the worst video games ever, but we can't ignore any issues that any games may have, else games never get better if we don't point out the flaws. Don't just insult or ignore what a critic of Call of Duty may have to say. You're free to disagree with them, but don't try to shut them up. And lastly, when it comes to Call of Duty fans, the biggest hypocrisy of all. You call yourself a gamer, but all you play is Call of Duty. Look, you're free to buy and play whatever video games you like, but when it's just one game, one single game, one single franchise, one single series, that's just wrong. You're free to do it. I can't stop you, but why do you do this to yourselves? Why do you hinder yourselves? Gaming. Video gaming is amazing. Video games are amazing. The experiences, the adventures, the interactions that can happen and are available in video games from so many different franchises and series, developers and studios, from AAA to indie, from single player to multiplayer, why would you deny yourselves all that video gaming has to offer? Why would you deny yourselves and limit yourselves to just Call of Duty? And it's always the two same excuses I hear from fans. Well, it's the only game all my other friends buy. Or, well, it's the only game I'm good at. One, using your friends is a shallow excuse to play only one video game and one video game only. And two, how are you ever going to get better at other video games if you don't even try. Video games have so much more to offer than just Call of Duty, than just the generic military and sometimes military sci-fi shooter. And there are far superior examples to multiplayer first-person shooters, or even generic military first-person shooters. If you want your friends to buy and play other video games with you, take the first leap. Experiment. Hey guys, I just picked up and played this brand new game. It's awesome. I'd love it for you guys to come play it with me. How about instead of you guys spending your money on the newest Call of Duty DLC, you come buy this game and play it with me? Look, I get it. Multiplayer games are awesome and they provide a unique experience and Call of Duty was one of the pioneers for multiplayer. But so many other games, so many other series, so many other franchises, so many other experiences have come out since the first Call of Duty. And being a gamer is all about playing video games. Focus on the S. Multiple. Calling yourself a gamer because you only play Call of Duty is like calling yourself a gamer when all you play is Angry Birds on your phone. Look, if the Call of Duty video games are some of your favorite video games and you truly, truly love and enjoy playing them, then by all means, I don't want to spoil your fun. But video games have so much to offer in terms of story gameplay and visuals. And trust me, please trust me when I say 
It's worth it to try out different video games, new and old. They can change your perspective on anything and everything. In the end, however, all this Call of Duty hypocrisy from all sides boils down to this. Whether you hate or are a fan of Call of Duty, your feelings towards Call of Duty are meaningless if you don't also share your feelings on the other video games that make up video games. And that's all I have to say on the matter, and that has been a video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you liked the video. If you didn't need to like the video in any way, shape, or form, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps everybody involved with the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment. What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the topic of this video? I love reading comments. Again, nearly enough comments, please leave a comment. If you want to help out and support this video, and please share it on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to help out and support me directly, then please consider pledging and becoming a patron on my Patreon. Anyways, guys, that's been a video, and I will see you all later.